Welcome to part 3 of Getting Started. This tutorial follows on from part 2 of Getting Started in MovieEdit Pro 2021 Plus and Premium and covers some important definitions and the user interface in more detail. After part 1, you should now have MovieEdit Pro 2021 installed, updated, and the additional content downloaded and installed. In part 2, we learned about setting up MovieEdit Pro, including getting help, program settings, project settings, and an overview of the three screens of the user interface. If you're only somewhat familiar with MovieEdit Pro, you may want to also watch my tutorials on basic editing, parts 1 and 2. I'll use the term MEP rather than saying MovieEdit Pro each time. We'll start with some definitions necessary to understand what you're doing. You'll be working with a project, movies, and objects. The objective is to create a compiled video that you can watch on a television, upload to the internet, or share with others, like an MP4, or a DVD, or a Blu-ray disc. A project is what you're doing, creating a compilation of video, audio, and images, edited the way you want, and most likely including some effects, transitions, and titles. A project can contain one or more movies. The demo project, shown here, shows a single movie project and I suggest that you open it to see how Magix has put the project together. Back to my project called Seasons. When you save a project, it creates a file with the extension MVP on your hard drive, like this project, seasons.mvp. This is the project file that you will always load to do further editing. The project file is just a set of instructions for editing, including the path and name of any objects used. It does not contain the objects themselves, which is why a project file is usually quite small. The first video clip is 95 megabytes, but the project file, Seasons, is only 421 kilobytes. A movie can be one single video clip, or a combination of objects like videos, photos, music, titles, transitions, and much more. You can have several movies in a project, and each movie can be exported individually as a video file. All or only some of the movies can be burned to a DVD or Blu-ray disc with a menu. It helps if you know what your intentions are for your project at the beginning. Export one movie or each movie to a video file or burning to a disc. But you can always change your mind and even do both export and burning. For this example, Seasons, the tab above the project window was also called Seasons by default. But I renamed it in the part 2 tutorial to Winter. I want to create a movie for each season, so I'll add a movie by clicking on the plus button and it automatically gets the name of the project or the name of the project with 01 appended. I'll right click on the tab or use the pop down menu and change the name to Spring. I'll add two more movies, Summer and Fall. Note that this doesn't change the name of my project, it's still Seasons. Movies can be exported to an MVD file, which is just a single movie project file, and open in a different project. I'll save the project. We'll start with Winter, so I'll click on that tab or Movie. Objects are the individual units of a movie. There are different types of objects, videos, photos, titles, transitions, decorative elements, and audio. I already have three objects on the timeline, two videos and a photo. It's very important to understand that MAP is a non-destructive video editor. You can add videos, photos, and audio files to the timeline, edit them, split them, trim them, and remove them from the timeline, but nothing happens to the file itself, which remains unchanged on your hard drive. Just do not delete the files used in the project from your hard drive. Again, MAP does not actually import the file itself into the project. It only uses the objects in the project. So any objects that are imported must remain on your hard drive at the same location. On to the user interface. There are three main windows, the preview monitor, the media pool, and the project window, commonly referred to as the timeline when in timeline mode. This project is called Seasons, the first movie is Winter, and there are three objects on the timeline. I'll zoom out on the timeline to see some empty space at the right end. The preview monitor is where videos and photos are displayed. When you play back from the timeline, you see what's on the timeline. Use the space bar to start and stop playback. This monitor does double duty as a source monitor. You can use it to preview videos or photos before importing them. Select a video clip in a media pool and you'll see three icons. 
a play button, brackets, and insert to the timeline button. Click on the first one and the video shows up in the preview monitor, now acting as a source monitor, and playback is started. Stop that. Click on the brackets of the video clip in the media pool and the video shows up in the monitor but doesn't play back. This mode is for selecting just a range from the video by using the brackets to define the start and end of what you want to put on the timeline. Once defined, you can press on the insert button or drag and drop the image from the monitor to the timeline and only the range will be imported. The third button on the object in the media pool will simply import the entire clip. Photos only have two buttons, as there's no range to select. Note the transport control buttons below the window. Go over each button with the mouse to see the hint. The last button to the right is a lightning bolt. If turned on, blue that is, then the options in the pop-down are activated. Right-click to see the options. Turning this off should give smoother playback, but the resolution will be reduced. If you have any effects, you can temporarily deactivate them. There's a menu button at the upper left of the preview window. Click on it to see the options. If the jog wheel is not on, turn it on. If you can't see the jog wheel in the transport control buttons area, it's because the width of the preview monitor is too small. So make the window wider by dragging the right hand side. Again in the menu are zoom in and out and some percentages. This is for the preview monitor only, not for zooming in and out on an object. Until you understand what these do, Keep the monitor at 100%. You can resize all windows and move them around, even to a second monitor. I'll go to Window, Windows Arrangement, Reset Window Arrangement, the shortcut's F9, and my three windows are back to normal. I'll delete the video that I added and get the project full width. The upper right window is the media pool. There are five tabs at the top. The Import tab is where you have access to the files on your computer, in particular video, photo, and audio files that you'll want to use in the project. What you see in the Import tab is like a version of Windows Explorer and everything is live, so do not delete anything here unless you really want to remove it from your hard drive. There are buttons at the top to help with navigation on your hard drives. I'll switch from the default view to the folder view. In the folder view, you can navigate to the folder where you have the files that you want to use in the project. I'll switch back to the default view and open My Media. We see links to folders that are there by default, including My Videos, My Music, and My Pictures. If you keep your video, photo, and audio files in those Windows default locations, you can quickly get there by using the links. You can also create your own links to folders. Once you've navigated to a folder with your material, like Spring, click on the Gear Shape Parameter button. Note the possibilities on the menu. I'll select Create Link for Folder and it's added to the bottom of the list. Now I can quickly get to that folder if I'm in some other folder. I'll go back to Winter. At the right is a plus minus zoom button and a display options button to see a list, details, or large icons. The slider under the plus minus button makes the icons smaller or larger. The next tab is Effects. You'll have a lot to learn if you've never used Effects. Before using any effect, you first have to select an object on the timeline. The important effects to learn are the first ones. Title editing, which will show up when you create a title. Under video effects, brightness and color. And then view and animation, especially size and position, where you can resize and move video and photo objects. Each of these merits a tutorial on its own. The Templates tab contains preset templates, most of which were installed when you downloaded and installed the additional content. Familiarize yourself with each of them and then try them out. The Audio tab contains any audio files purchased through the store. There are some free ones that come with MAP. You can add these to your project on a separate track. The best way is to drag the file to where you want to put it on the timeline. I'll delete that. If you're upgrading from a previous version of MAP, and you have already purchased audio from the store, like I have, you may need to download it again. This applies to things that may be under the Templates tab as well. You'll know this if you see the down arrow icon in one of these tabs. Click on the icon to download it and install it. The store, well, that's self-explanatory. The bottom part of the screen is the project window and I'm in timeline mode. 
This is where we build the project. The project window consists of tracks onto which you can bring in objects like video files, photos, and audio files, as we've seen. There's a time indication that starts at zero, subdivided into minutes, seconds, and frames. Not fractions of a second, because everything gets down to frames, like 29.97 frames per second, or 25 frames per second. The smallest unit is a frame. Look at the top of the preview monitor to see the precise location of the playback marker. Above the project window is a toolbar with a series of buttons. Those with three dots below and to the right have a menu with more tools that can be accessed by right-clicking on the button. You'll need to learn all about these tools, and I go through most of them in my tutorials on basic editing parts 1 and 2. At the upper right are more buttons. Open the speaker button with a right click to see the options. The next one opens the audio mixer for audio. The next row has buttons for various modes. The first is storyboard mode. This is a simple view of whatever is on track 1 only, and you can work here to build your project. It's great for quickly moving objects around, like photos. However, I recommend using the timeline mode. I'll add another photo to the storyboard from the import tab. Note that the small red square shows up at the upper left of the thumbnail, indicating that this object has been added to the project. Now I have several objects on the storyboard, and I can play back and drag the mouse to view the playback. If you want to move the photo somewhere else, simply grab it and drag it to the new location, between two other objects, or at the end. I'll undo that. There are other things that you can do in storyboard, but it's better to work in timeline mode. The next button is Scene Overview, and we see the four thumbnails. This is basically just to see what's on track one of the timeline in a convenient way. About the only thing that you can do here is drag the thumbnails to change the order. The next button takes us back to timeline mode. The next button, with the two cameras, is for multicam mode, and I won't click on this. To its right is a small square. Clicking on this opens the window full screen. Click on it again to get back to the regular view. The two other main windows have the same full screen button at the upper right. If you run into trouble, press the F9 key to do a reset of the windows. Now we see the four objects on the timeline with videos and photos on track 1 and the audio part on track 2. And we see more tracks below this. At the right of the timeline window is a vertical scroll bar that allows you to scroll down to see more tracks. At the bottom, the minus and plus buttons are to zoom in and out of the tracks vertically. The track protocol in MAP is unlike many other video programs in that the background is on the lower number track and anything that sits on top of that, like a title or a photo insert, goes on a higher number track. Tracks are numbered downwards, so it's important to remember that 1 is at the bottom of the pile, 2 goes above it, 3 above it, etc. This way, one does not have to insert tracks to put an object on top of another object, just put it on a higher number track. As an example, I'll drag the photo, which is not full screen, to track 3 below the first video. You can see that it covers most of the video of track 1. I'll undo that. At the bottom is a horizontal scroll bar that can be resized to zoom in and out of the timeline. At the bottom right are more possibilities. Pop down the 100% and you'll see a menu with many options. If I select zoom 1 frame, the timeline zooms way in so that I can see individual frames. Use the left and right arrow keys to go from one frame to the next. Just to the right of this pop-down is a double-headed arrow. This zooms the project in to fill the visible timeline. For the next button, select an object. Clicking on the button shows the selected object filling most of the timeline and expanded vertically. Clicking the button again returns it to normal. The minus and plus buttons are to zoom in and out of the timeline horizontally. At the left of the timeline is the track header containing buttons to solo, which will turn off all other tracks, mute or rather switch off the track, lock the track, and maximize the height of the track, which makes the track height higher. Now you can see a box into which you can put in a name for the track by double clicking on the box, typing in a name, then enter to keep it. Clicking on the Maximize Track button again returns the track height to the default. 
The Minimize Track button makes the track height smaller. Clicking again returns to the default track height. Note that the M button turns off the track, so if you have video and audio on one track rather than two tracks like I do, then both the video and the audio will be turned off. Having video and audio on separate tracks allows you to turn off just one or the other. The pop-down gives more possibilities. And there's a plus button to insert a track and the X to delete the track. Just above the track header is a lightning bolt to start preview rendering and a pop-down to start preview rendering or remove a rendering range if one has been previously rendered. The preview rendering will render up a part of the timeline or a range, if defined, to allow smoother playback of complex areas like transitions or special effects. We already saw the movies, so I won't repeat that, except to say that MEP can have multiple timelines called movies. An interesting point, you can actually open another project into your current project. Go to File, Open, select another project, and a message asks if you want to close the current project or add to the current project. Add it, and it will show up as one or more movies. This is the only way to be able to copy objects from one project to another. This does not affect the project that has been imported into your existing project. I'll delete this movie. Let's move to the top menu above the preview monitor. Click on File to see the possibilities. Some important ones are Saving and Save As. Export Movie. You can export a movie here or by using the up arrow at the top right of the screen. File. Export Movie gives you more settings and better control. I'll select MP4. Click on Display All to see all the presets in the pop-down. Open Backup and Settings, Program and Project Settings, all of which we saw in Part 2. It's always best to save the project right after starting it to lock it in, which I did in the Part 2 tutorial. Save often by clicking on the Disk button. Crashes and power failures can happen. The project name is displayed at the very top of the screen. By the way, if you have the basic version, you will not see plus or premium appended to the name of the program. The other drop-down items are Edit, containing many possibilities. Lots to learn here. One important note is that MEP usually has more than one way to do things by using the top menu or by right-clicking on an object to see the context menu. Effects which gives access to whatever is under the Effects tab and some items of the Templates tab of the Media Pool. Window, with more features to learn. Note the possibilities under Window Arrangement, especially Reset Window Arrangement, or F9. Share, which allows you to export or upload to Vimeo or YouTube in one shot. I do not recommend this, as sometimes they change the protocols without warning and the upload doesn't work but you should always export first, review the results for errors, then upload normally. You can also send your project, actually an export of it, to Music Maker for editing. I have a tutorial on this. Finally, you can edit a photo, if one is selected, in the external photo editor defined in the program settings. The default is Photo Designer 7. The last item is Help, and we saw this in Part 2. Note the Activate Contents pack. If you've received a serial number or a coupon code for something from Magix, you can enter it here and you'll likely be taken to the Downloads page. Way off to the right are three more buttons. The first is to return to this editing screen if in the Burn interface. The second button gives you the Burn interface where you can set up titles, movies and chapters for burning to a DVD or Blu-ray disc. The last button is a simplified version of what is under File, Export Movie. Review this, but I suggest that you learn to use the detailed version. We've now covered pretty much everything in the user interface, but there's much more to learn. I suggest that you now watch my two tutorials on basic editing. Make your own test projects and try things out. You won't break anything. Definitely do not start learning with an actual big project until you've learned the basics. Thank you for watching. Until next time, enjoy.